this is Down with Michael Jones, and I am Toy Thomas, author of the Eternal Curse series, and we are here for another installment of Influences. I'm teaching this little guy all about the things that went into me writing my book to help him bone up just in time for me to release Eternal Curse Battleground, the sequel. It'll be coming out on May 16th at the Tidewater uh, Comic Con in Virginia Beach. Here I am back in October at the con, but this time around I'll actually be part of the event and Dallas is so excited. Come on Dallas. Alright, so Dallas has some questions that he'd like to ask to help him better ex understand how um, Star Wars has influenced the Eternal Curse series. So, here we go. Well, Dallas again, a good question. Um, well, I've always liked Star Wars, specifically the original trilogy, but I like all of them. So um, mostly I'll be talking about the influences from the original um, Star Wars. It's a very epic story, which is kind of how I envision the Eternal Curse series will be when it's all said and done. For me, the original Star Wars trilogy is cinematic storytelling at the very best and can beat that. Well, Dallas, I'd say um, Luke Skywalker, Han and Chewie, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Vader. When I think of Luke Skywalker influences on the whole uh, Eternal Curse um, series, specifically in Giovanni's Angel, I think of the idea of the, the discovery of the one. Whenever you have a discovery of the one, you're usually going to have a story that involves this one making lots of mistakes before they completely blow your mind. And I think that's what I've captured in Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel. Plus, on a little side note, I also consider the concept of the one from the movie The Matrix kind of playing a little role in there too. Next, there's um, Han and Chewie. And these two characters, I grouped them together. Sure, Han and Luke form a friendship that people love to talk about, but it always kind of bothered me that people never considered the big bromance between Han and Chewie. I mean, they are the ones who spend the most time together, you know, traveling through space, you know, fighting and, you know, delivering things. I, in retrospect, I think Luke spends more time with R2 than he actually spends with Han, so... Anyway, uh, but the idea of a, you know, buddy or best friend type story or almost like a brother's type story, it's developed very well in the Eternal Curse series in book two, but it begins in book one with a special relationship between Giovanni and my main supporting um, character of Abraham. And then there is... Obi-Wan Kenobi, to me, the most underrated Jedi of the whole series, but that's a topic for another day. Um, what I glean from that character in my Eternal Curse series is, is the necessity of what I call the wise old man. I think every hero needs some type of mentor to kind of guide them on their path, and in my Eternal Curse series, Abraham is my Obi-Wan. Then, of course, there is Darth Vader. Every story needs a villain, but his story kind of goes beyond the traditional villain. You know, Batman has Joker, Luke has Vader, but it kind of goes beyond that. I mean, their whole dynamic gets kind of top determined throughout the um, Star Wars trilogy, and I think uh, the same thing happens in Eternal Curse. Well, I'd have to say the whole Skywalker family drama thing and then the Luke versus Vader thing. When it comes to storylines, family drama is always good content. And the whole dynamic of Luke and Leia's relationship shifts. They start off as one thing and then by the end of the trilogy, they find out they're brother and sister, which is great. Happy family until they realize their dad's Vader, so some things, you know, get mixed up. I'm really excited to see, you know, what Disney's going to do with, you know, Leia's story, if they're doing anything, because she does play a part in the whole control, uh, you know, of the Force, so that should be interesting. In my Eternal Curse series, we have lots of relationships like this that start out as one thing, 
end up at something else. And then there's all kinds of family drama and shifts that take place. A lot of that I gleaned from this obvious Star Wars influence. Then there's the whole Luke versus Vader thing, which I've already kind of mentioned a little bit with the whole, you have your hero and then his nemesis. But here you have another dynamic where we all know that Vader ends up being Luke's father, which kind of just completely blows your mind. And I think I've been able to kind of um, gather that same kind of notion, um, that feeling that impact in the Eternal Curse series with my character Giovanni and you know some of the villains that he encounters. Uh, when you involve angels and demons, when you go beyond the time of man, things get interesting. All right, this one's tough, Dallas, but I'll give it a go. I'd say that in terms of Star Wars, the eternal curse of Giovanni's angel would kind of be like for Luke to look back over his life as an old man. He might even be taking care of Han on his deathbed. And then in this story, Luke would never, um, Leia would never be Luke's sister. So that's kind of the best I can do with that one. <laughs> well, that's all I have for today. I don't want to overwhelm this little guy, but I think he's got plenty to keep his mind busy until my next episode, which will be all about the classic literature or, you know, traditional stories that influence the Eternal Curse series. So go ahead. If you liked what you saw today, don't be shy. Check the link below and you can pick up your copy of Eternal Curse Giovanni's Angel. And you can also find out more about the influences that went into the story with Eternal, with 40 Days and Nights of Eternal Curse, which is the official companion guide. Um, I also have some really cool Pinterest boards, um, story guides that give you kind of some dream soundtrack ideas and different um, actors I think could play these characters. So check that out. Um, you can join me on Twitter, join the conversation, tell me what books or movies you think were influenced by some other creative work. You can use the hashtag influence and there might be a surprise there for you, a little giveaway I might be putting together. So check that out and remember, Eternal Curse Battle Realm, the sequel, will be coming out on May 16th of this year at the Tidewater Comic Con in Virginia Beach. And um, it'll also be coming out online, but you can pre-order it at the links below and get it before it comes out. And, oh yeah, and don't forget, I am doing a giveaway, so you can check the links below for that. I'm giving away a $25 Amazon gift card and some other little treats. <laughs> I think that's all we have time for today. Say bye-bye, Dallas. Thank you. I miss trans fat. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as it used to be. Speak, 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 speak. Again, speak. One more time, good speak. Speak. There you go, good dog. How are you? Ooh, that's blurry. I'm trying to practice my focus. Don't move, sorry. Give me just a second, bud. Oh, no wonder I have it on record. Two more, and then we'll be finished with Dallas. But like I said, I still have to go back and do the one group I do with the, the Batman.